everybody and welcome back to another episode of the points of articulation my name's dave and today we're looking at the hot wheels star wars aat now the aat stands for armored assault tank and it's better known around the community as either the droid tank or the trade federation droid tank now the aat made its first appearance in star wars episode one the phantom menace now like i always say the prequels have their issues you know i could see a lot of the arguments However, I do think the prequels did an excellent job in world building and giving us unique crafts and characters, such as the droid tank. Now, I do think Hot Wheels did a decent job with this tank. It has a great design, it's very heavy with a lot of die cast, got moving parts, and for its length, it's 3 inches long, which is great. So we do have a lot to cover, we're going to look at the mold, the paint, put on its stand, compare it to some other vehicles, and then we'll be done. So let's get moving. Alright, let's kick this review off looking at the mold, and I must say again, Hot Wheels did a decent job on this. Lots of little details and big lines and modules. Very sick. So like always, we're going to take a look at the main points of the ship, and then zoom in to show off all that great detail. So let's start at the top, we have our hatch where the command droid would pop out. Back here, if it was more detailed, we would have our comm and control antennas. Coming down, we have the main barrel of our laser cannon, and that can actually move up and down which is pretty sick, and the turret itself can actually rotate, and it is hindered by this big armor piece here, but that is sick, so you could actually get this to go up, a little down, and rotate that, and that is beautiful. A nice touch, you didn't have to do it, but I'm glad they did. Now moving on down, we have these two arms coming out here. You may see two barrels, the bottom one is a, basically a range finder, the top barrel is a regular normal blaster. So all in all, we have three guns right here on the top. Coming down, behind this armor plate should be a pilot. And then we have our base here with six launch tubes. And that is nice. And just look at the paint. Magnificent stuff there. Hot Wheels is really stepping up the game. So all in all, you can see some nice lines and details already. But on the bottom, we have our three rivets, copyright crap, peg connector port, and this metal disc here is the connector for the turret so it can turn back and forth. All in all, a finely done craft with a lot of moving parts, which is a huge plus. So now let's get up and close with this bad boy. Alright, having a closer look here on the turret, you can see some great lines and little raised sections. We have our hatch. It's pretty sick to be honest with you. And then looking on the side, we can see some circles that are raised. Pretty sick. Now the barrel itself is nicely done as well. We can see some great designs here. And the fact that it moves, that is awesome. And on the bottom, it's also detailed as you can see. That's fantastic stuff. Coming on to the main body, the armored section, we have some lines that are raised. And that's the same for this side. Then coming down, we have these nice molded sections here. I like them a lot. More lines and, you know, recessed lines for the paneling. And that's the same for this side. A little paint wear there. But awesome job. I like all the work they did here. Then we have two rounded sections leading to the blasters and range finders. And they are molded good. You can see right here we have a couple lines. That's pretty amazing stuff for the size. Now coming down to the front here. Nicely done. Beautiful work here with the lines coming down to this section. And then we have our launchers right here. And you can see they're a little recessed. Like a little dimple. And that's pretty sharp. And then for the bottom you can see it curves up. And that's pretty cool. Coming to the back, you can see it's a little flat, but not a big deal. For the underneath, it's mostly blob, but we do have our rivets, like I mentioned before, copyright crap. Coming down here, basically back here and underneath is where we have our hatch for the droids to enter and exit, our engines, stuff like that. But they turn this section right here into the peg port, which is a nice touch, but you can see some line work. And a little circle here and here for the hinge. 
pretty sharp. And back here we have our recesses on the side, but you can see little tiny pistons there. So that's pretty awesome when you really think about it. But all in all, a beautiful ship. And I'm sorry if I can't get it focused good. This yellow is really messing with the uh, camera lens here. Or I should say phone lens. But I hope you guys can see all the beautiful details like I can. This is just an awesome piece. So now that I'm done looking at the mold, let's take a look at that beautiful paint job. Alright, looking at the paint of the AAT, I think Hot Wheels did a decent job giving us five different colors. The first color up is a nice pale yellow. And that's the color of the main ship. And I think they did a nice job. I also got to give them credit for using plastic that matches pretty well to the main die cast paint. As you can see on the bottom, sure it's a few shades off, but damn, that's pretty close. And when you see this in person, unless you're really scrutinizing it, you can't even tell there's a difference. So nice job on Hot Wheels part for that. Now also we have a dark tan, well dark yellow, whatever. And that is for the front of the uh, turret here, the barrel, front of the ship right here. And then also on the sides next to the launch tubes. And I think it is a nice darker yellow. Came out pretty good, nice and clean. Then we have a very dark tan. And it's almost brown in a way, but back here, but a turret. And then on the sides. And I think these three colors go very nice together. Pretty sick. Now we have glossy black for the launch tubes. And I think those came out beautiful. You can see how the light just bounces on all that. And the last color is a very dark brown for these sections right here. And also the wear on all these launch tubes, like the debris that comes out of them. I think that's sick. I, I just love when a company, especially Titanium, does this a lot. When they put all that dirt on there, I think it came out very good. You can see it's done actually very nicely. Tons of little brush strokes. And that basically does it for the paint. I think on the whole it's very accurate to what we saw in the film. And a decent job. Very clean and everything. So now that we're done looking at the mold and the paint. Let's put this bad boy on the stand. Compare it and then we'll be done. And just like most Hot Wheels ships. It comes with a cool translucent stand with a CIS symbol. Just peg it in the port like so. Hear that click. And you're good to go. Alright for a quick size comparison with the Hot Wheels AAT. I have it next to its Micro Machines counterpart. A great little model. Over here we have the titanium version with its Clone Wars color scheme. And I have to admit, I really don't have a favorite. Each one has pros and cons. Uh, if you mix both of them together, it would be the perfect model. But for right now, I don't have a favorite. They're both good in their own ways. Perhaps we'll revisit both of these in the future. And then lastly, we have the Hot Wheels ATST. All in all, some beautiful ships. And that does it today for my review of the Hot Wheels Star Wars AAT. Now the armored assault tank first appeared in Star Wars Episode 1 The Phantom Menace. And for its length, it's 3 inches long, which is pretty good. Now by now, if you've been watching my channel, you know I do like the prequels. Um, not as much as the original trilogy, but I respect George Lucas for giving us beautiful worlds, vehicles, and interesting characters. Regardless if it's in the Clone Wars animated show or the prequel trilogy itself. Now, despite if you agree or disagree with my opinion, this is actually a very cool design, and I'm glad Hot Wheels brought it to us. So why do I like it? First of all, the detail. Uh, at first, you may think it's lacking, but as we saw up close, we have some nice molded lines, panels, armor pieces, pieces that are a little concave or bulky. Just nicely done stuff, especially on the turret and the barrels. Now, speaking of the turret, it moves. It can rotate left and right a little bit, and also the barrel itself can go up and down. And that adds a lot of playability for the children. And also, if you want to add a little flavor, if you will, to your posing or display of these crafts, you know, you could do this however you want. And I think that's a nice addition to the collection. Now for paint, we got five different colors that work in harmony. On the whole, when you look at this, it looks pretty accurate to what we saw in the film and that's what counts now also like most of the hot wheel ships you get a nice clear translucent stand which this baby sits on and it has that nice cis symbol so it unifies it with the rest of the collection now i do have to add if you take the stand off this will not stand by itself uh, it's kind of back heavy so it will fall this way but it's not a big deal 
Now, if you're looking to buy this, a lot of people are finding them in Walmarts and Targets and other stores. Uh, I have not found any in New Jersey. However, I did buy mine off Amazon for $4.99 as an add-on item. So keep your eyes open, check eBay, Amazon, and get it when it's cheap. So I recommend this ship for anybody who's a fan of the prequel trilogy, the Clone Wars, or also if you're a fan of the Trade Federation or CIS faction. So that's everything I have to say about this tank today. I hope you enjoyed my review. If you did, hit that like button. And if you'd like to see new reviews every Thursday, subscribe. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.